In this video, I'm going to answer your questions on treating MS attacks. Don't turn away because that starts right now. Hey! Howdy! Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I started this YouTube channel to help my own MS clinic patients learn between visits, and it's my hope that through these videos, I can help you learn too. If you're impacted by MS and you want to up your game, please subscribe to the channel and make sure to ring the notifications bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming content. I've recently been asked some provocative questions surrounding how we treat MS attacks, and I'm going to answer them in this video. If you're looking for a refresher course to better understand MS attacks in general, I'll throw a link up above to a video I did that discusses MS attacks in some depth, so check that out. Now, let's answer these awesome questions. JCB asks, how long can an attack last and when do you know it's over? Attacks come on in a subacute fashion, meaning the symptoms build up over a period of hours to days. That's different than what we see in a stroke, which is sudden. It's also different than what we see in a slow infection or in a cancer where symptoms can build up over weeks to months. And so that's a first differentiator. The, the attack will typically last weeks to months in duration and then get better, either all the way or part way. Exactly when someone gets better can be difficult to sort out. And as a general rule of thumb, if you're left with residual deficits following an attack six months later, there's a high likelihood that you're going to be stuck with those symptoms. Now, there are certain wonderful exceptions to the rule where people had symptoms still at six months and they got better afterwards. But generally speaking, we expect attacks to get better over a period of weeks to months, and deficits that you're left with at six months are very likely going to stick around. I also want to point out that after you've recovered from an attack, if you have a period where your core body temperature is raised either because it's really hot outside or because you have a urinary tract infection and a fever, you may see the re-emergence of those old symptoms. That's called a pseudo-attack and those symptoms will die back down once the inciting illness or the cause of the heat goes away. And now, the question of the day. Which is true regarding treating an MS attack? Number one, must be given through an IV to work. Number two, requires hospitalization. Number three, can be given as high dose oral pills. Or number four, always results in 90% or better recovery. Jot your answer down and stay tuned to the end of the video to find out the correct response. Sandra asks, can infections like the flu or shingles trigger MS attacks? And the answer is yes. An infection most certainly can trigger an attack. One wrinkle that makes this complicated is sometimes you've had an old neurological injury, like let's say you had an optic neuritis 10 years ago that healed. When you get the urinary tract infection, those old neurological symptoms come back out. That's a pseudo attack. And when the urinary tract infection goes away, the symptoms get better. That's not an attack, and we generally don't treat with steroids for that. Obviously, this is complicated, and the best suggestion I can give is when you have a new neurological symptom that you're concerned might be an attack, go see your neurologist. The neurologist can help you sort out, is this an infection triggering an attack, or is this more likely to be a pseudo-exacerbation? And that way, they can make sure that you're getting treated appropriately. Penny Ake writes, Dr. B, can you answer my question about the need or not need for steroids during a flare if you have a documented UTI? I don't want to take steroids if they aren't necessary. Penny, that's a great question. And as I was mentioning, whenever someone has new neurological symptoms concerning for a possible attack, it's appropriate to check for an occult urinary tract infection. Occult means you're not fully aware of it. And if you identify a urinary tract infection, we want to give appropriate antibiotics to treat it. Whether or not we concomitantly give steroids along with it is really a clinical decision that we have to make on a case-by-case -case basis. In some cases, we might treat the UTI and then see if the neurological symptoms resolve, in which case, in hindsight, we would call those events a pseudo-attack caused by the UTI. If, on the other hand, we treated the UTI and afterwards the neurological symptoms continued or even got worse, we might then decide that the UTI in fact triggered an attack and treat with steroids. Take home message here is you want to touch base with your neurologist. Thank you for asking the question. Pinewood Drive asks, 
How long does a three to five day round of solumedrol reduce inflammation for? That's an excellent question, Pinewood. And in fact, what steroids do is fascinating. They change the DNA of the white blood cells and therefore that change lasts the duration of the white blood cells. Those cells live for months and months and months, which means that the reduction in inflammation caused by steroids lasts way longer than the course of the treatment. You get treated for three or five days, but the benefits that you see as a result will last for months. Monica EMT1 writes, I just completed my second round of five day steroids since July. My last three days, I've had horrible heartburn and indigestion. Could this be from the steroids? I'm in so much pain and nothing helps. Monica, yes, this is in fact a very common side effect of steroids at high doses. That is GERD, gastric esophageal reflux disease, and indigestion. And oftentimes we can treat people prophylactically by giving them twice daily PPI medicines to protect their stomach during the course of the treatment. I do want to point out a rare consequence of steroids, which can be GI bleeding. And so God forbid, if you're noticing that you're coughing or spitting up blood, you're going to seek immediate medical attention. Or if you notice that you have blood from down below, you're going to seek immediate medical attention. Either way, this is definitely something that you want to bring up to your treating neurologist and remind them of this the next time that you need steroids, because they can give you those, pre those preparatory prophylactic medicines to protect the stomach before you even get started. Chris Barnhart writes, I'm allergic to steroids too and use the Akthar on my second round. This brings up an excellent point. Steroids come with side effects and there are situations where individual patients simply cannot tolerate them, whether that be because of brittle diabetes or steroid induced rage or what have you. Akthar ACTH is an alternative to steroids and it's an excellent option to keep in your back pocket when someone with MS would need steroids but can't take steroids. I'll do a separate video in the future where I talk in depth about Akthar. And now to answer the question of the day, which is true regarding treatment for an MS attack? Number one is false. Steroids can be given through the IV, but they also can be taken through pills. And in fact, high dose oral steroids has the same efficacy, safety, and tolerability. It doesn't involve getting poked with a needle and it's cheaper. Number two is also false. Attacks do not always require hospitalization. As a rule of thumb, I feel that someone with MS having an attack needs to be admitted only if they're blind, God forbid, they can't swallow safely, they're not able to ambulate, they have other comorbid medical conditions which complicate the picture, or they don't have a social structure to help take care of them. Otherwise, steroids and treatment can be given at home for an attack. Number four is also false. Sometimes steroids result in a wickedly fast recovery, 100% and we're back in the game. Sometimes people take steroids and have no response. And the reality is, is that it's variable from attack to attack and from patient to patient. We can't a priori predict the response to steroids. And therefore, the correct answer to the question of the day is number three. High dose steroids can be given as oral pills to treat MS attacks. Did you get the answer correct? Hey village, what questions about treating MS attacks do you still have? Please leave them in the comments section below and I'll answer them in an upcoming video or live stream. My name's Aaron Boster and thank you for learning about MS with me. If you'd like to better understand MS relapses, click this video right there. YouTube Analytics thinks that you would adore this video right there, so check that one out. And if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Just click that circle with my face on it. Go ahead, click my face. Until my next video or my next live stream, take care.